Oh my gosh, what a treat today is Miss Beth Hennington in the house. <laughs> Welcome to the Fit Soul Podcast, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So fun. I've been waiting for this for a minute. For a hot minute, for a hot minute. I'm so excited to have you here. And we're going to explain a little bit about you, but y'all, you're in for such a treat today. Beth's personality is uh -huh electric and contagious like you're just going to be chuckling i don't even know what stories you're going to share beth you probably oh, man. Know what story. <laughs> <laughs> but she calls herself a hot mess i might agree with that <laughs> as you should so beth and i just recently met and you know sometimes when you meet someone and you're instantly like your spirit connects with their spirit and you just instantly like that person that's how I felt about you Beth I just felt an instant connection we did we just like boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> it was all over with yeah. um so in the one really really cool fact is that she actually is the food network Christmas Christmas cookie challenge just this year like this is a yes. tremendous Tremendous accomplishment, not just a contestant, not just a runoff, not just, no, 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 like the winner. So we're going to break down part of this um, huge accomplishment for her because she has not been training her entire life to be a TV star. And now she kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you're really good for my ego, by the way. <laughs> so true. Beth, I mean, it's just amazing. I love to highlight women that have pushed through the fear and they kept going and they did the thing anyway. And they're actually using their platform for so many other things. And then also before we get started, so as we were logging on, she's like, oh, I've been so busy. I've been a bunny. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> You've been a bunny. Oh, I've been dressing up in a, as a bunny. <laughs> but this is because she's a philanthropist at heart and she loves to raise money and awareness for different organizations. This one happens to be for the Salvation Army. So she's very, very, very involved in our local community. We actually live in the same community. And um, I just I just love everything about you so far. So welcome to the podcast. Thank girlfriend. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> Before we get started on your journey, can you tell us a little bit about um, just like you just won this incredible accomplishment? W what did that look like? How did how did you feel when they said, and the winner is? Oh my gosh, crazy. It was actually nuts. Um, I felt, I, I, I just screamed, as a matter of fact. I screamed really loud and... I just couldn't believe it. It was great. It was, I mean, because I had worked so hard to get to that point. And um, when they gave me the trophy, um, they were like, is there anything you'd like to say? And I was like, yes, I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> they were like, wrong show, man. <laughs> did you really say that? I did. <laughs> I don't think they really knew what to do with me. No. Because first, I'm from the South. Right. And then, like, I'm loud. And I'm, I just pretty much say what comes up here. And there's really not a whole lot of filtering going on. And so they didn't really know what to do with me. <laughs> that is awesome. So, so let's maybe, can you take me back? to the beginning because when I met you you're like oh yeah I'm a I was a mortgage banker and you were sharing that story oh I forgot to say we're the same age we both turned 50 this year I know <laughs> oh my gosh yes we're both pretty excited yeah. about it was such a milestone birthday so yeah well, go yes. on. And, I'm, and I'm so thankful that because um you know growing old is a privilege getting older not old because nobody you know it's 50 is not by no means old but it is a privilege to, to, to get to 50, a lot of, there are a lot of people that don't make it to age 50, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Aging, aging joyfully. That's what we're doing. That's right. That's aging right. Joyfully. Yeah. yeah girl. Okay. So you have not always been a, I guess you're considered a professional. What are you considered now? What is, what is a cookie? Girl, I'm the cookie right. lady. I'm just the cookie <laughs> lady. Just the cookie <laughs> and lady. cookie is my favorite food on planet earth. Like legit, my right. favorite food on planet earth. <laughs> All right. Um, so you've not always been a professional cookie lady. No, no. Share your journey no. with us just a little bit. Okay. So I will back up. Um, 
I have two children and who are now grown. I'm actually a grandmother of two, a five-year-old little girl and a one-year-old little boy. And I, they, grandchildren are the absolute best. Um, but I owned a mortgage company. Um, it provided a wonderful, comfortable living for my children, but it was not by any means what filled my cup. <laughs> you know, it was just not. And so when my kids both went to college, um, I had to be done with that. And um, I traded in the warranty deeds for piping bags and I started, <laughs> but it was not, I mean, it was so, it was scary. It was not, it was not, I mean, it was like, okay, is this what we're going to do? And then you just, I just did it. And I mean, there was no other option. You know what I mean? Like I got to make this work. Um, but it was. Okay, so when you say that you have to make this work, did you, what, did you decide to quit your steady, stable job and jump ship or was there like a transition time? What did that look like? I closed the mortgage company that was in Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. I moved back home, which is, um, Madison, Mississippi. Yeah. And, um, Yeah cookies started it was like no hey let's uh yeah it was no easy I don't that's not how I work that's not how I'm I'm just we're gonna make that happen so how did you go into the cookie business like what does that look like well so art has always been a part of my life in some shape form or fashion but it's always been on the side it's always been like a side hustle or something I did just to just to fulfill that crafty craving whatever I had because I mean the good lord made me a true dreamer I am a certified dreamer and a doer period I love that you just said you're a certified dreamer and this is the way God made you it That's is beautiful. I it, love that thanks it is I, I mean it's the truth it is literally the way he made me and so, I mean, but I have been known to get ahead of the good Lord sometimes. <laughs> and kind of like, mm -hmm. hang on, hang on. Same, <laughs> same, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, Lord, wait, this is the one we're going to do. Come, come, come over here, let me show you. And he's like, you no, know, ma'am, <laughs> this is the one we're going to do, you know? So I always have to like be very aware of, okay, Lord, I, I give this to you. And I, you know, I open my hands, the dreams that are not of you fall to the ground unplanted because those are not the dreams that I want. I want what it is you've got for me. And learning that is hard because- Can we just stop right there? I, I just feel like that must be unpacked because okay. when we dream, here's what I find, Beth, a lot of women that I serve, and I can say this because I did it myself, stop dreaming. There was one time that I was at dinner with some friends and um, a normal, a very normal conversation, normal people said, um, what do you like to do? Normal conversation. I couldn't even answer it. Like, I didn't even know what I like to do. Like I had not only stopped dreaming, I'd lost myself to motherhood and all the things. And I love that. Number one, you're a certified dreamer. Like that's beautiful. That'll inspire people, but that you can dream and not control it, but surrender to God. And just like, Lord, the ones that aren't meant for me, let them or take them away, take these dreams away. This isn't what I want. And then only take what you want. That's so beautiful, Beth. Wow. Thank you. It is, I mean, it's what I have to do because if, if I were to drive the ship, Lord knows we would have wrecked already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like these are, this is just the way it has to be. And, and like, when you do that, you have to, it's something that is learned because it is taking me I'm 50 years old and I'm still like, oh my gosh, it's still, I still need his mercy and grace every single day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I'm like, Lord, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to do this? And it's like, if I would be quiet long enough to hear him, mm -hmm. because being still a lot of times is not one of my strongest suits, but it is the best thing that we can do. And when we are quiet, 
I'm going to tell you this verse. So when I'm thinking, I need to make this transition, you know, have money, sell, don't have money, what you going to do kind of crazy thing. Um, and I was reading in Leviticus. And if you're like me, I'm reading in Leviticus and it's a bunch of rules and stuff. And I'm like looking ahead to see how many chapters we got. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> we got to, this is not, this is Lord, please. Lord, we I hate to complain, something. but this is boring. Like, we got something coming that's like good. <laughs> oh God, I keep looking how far ahead. But then I got the chapter, Leviticus chapter 26, verses three through six. And it says, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. Your land will yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing season will overlap your grape harvest. Your grape harvest will overlap the season of planting grain. Mm -hmm. You will eat your field, live securely in your land. I will bring peace to your land. Uh -huh. And you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid your land of all wild animals and I will keep your enemies out of your land. And I was like, yes, sir. I mean, how many not sleepless nights, like worrying about how stuff's going to get done or paid or, yeah. and it's like, if, when you get up and give it to God and lay it at his feet, but not picking it back up is the, 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 the whole thing there. <laughs> you can't pick it back up. You've got to give it to God and he takes care of it. Well, you know what I have to do? In fact, we were just talking about this with my coaching group just yesterday, actually, is that it's like that it is a process. I think surrender is a lifestyle because it's um, as believers, we have ourself, you know, what we want Bible calls it the flesh, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're really called to live from a spirit level, like that inside out level. And until the day we die, our self is going to battle with the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it is for me, because I think, especially the stronger willed you are, and we're both very strong willed women, mm -hmm. it is a lifestyle because we pick it up. Oh, wait, 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 I don't want it. I don't want it. Here you go, Lord. Or we pick it up and we hold on to it a little longer. I'm like, mm, I think I'm going to hold on to it for now. And then I have to learn. Usually I have to learn by mistakes, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and then put it back down. But I think the longer we walk, like you were just talking about into that peace, when you start to really cultivate and protect your peace of, of mind, of life, of spirit, then you're like, you know what? I don't need any of right. this unless the Lord right. ordains it and blesses it. I, I actually don't want it. That's right. That but time of so much beauty and rest mm. on the other side of that piece. So good. So much. So much. And once you, like you said, it's a lifestyle. Once you're able to get to that point, mm -hmm. it's like, why, Lord, do I even ever try? I know. Why? Because like you said, I don't want that mess. Uh -uh. I'm a hot, I don't, I'll mess that up in a minute. I know, I know. So good. Oh, wow. So big lesson so far is to surrender regularly and, and get still so you can hear the father's voice of which dream to run with. Yes, yes. So I am, I'm going to show you, I'm going to share this with you because I got it right here at my desk. Um, I, if you're not reading that or have not read this book, it's called 31 Days of Prayer for the Dreamer and the Doer. Right. It has, it is amazing. There's so many, there's 31 different prayers in here written by 31 different women. And it is amazing. And like I said, I'm a dreamer and a doer. I am a certified dreamer and doer. And it's just, yeah, girl, it's just, God is so good. And there's just, I mean... I, to this day, ask like when you ask me, what do you do or where is your business at? People ask me all the time, like, so so what's next? And it's like, I you tell me and we'll both know because whatever <laughs> God has for me is going to be ten times better than anything I could put together. Yes, and it's just I don't know. He'll let me know. He'll yeah. open the doors he wants me to walk through and close the ones he doesn't. That's right. That's right. Surrendered, he will. If not, he'll let you keep on walking them in the wrong direction because it's 
we we have that option, right? We have the option to do it on our own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My self-reliance kicks in so many times. And it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm a striver. And this is what I write down. I have to write this down. I gave up my striving for surrender. I will not strive. I will surrender. And it's just that constant, a little bit of a battle that I struggle with to surrender regularly on the regular to him because yeah. I don't want it my yeah. way. I, I, I kept doing that. That's tiring. Yeah, girl. Yeah, I, doers get stuff done, but it's tiring. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's crazy. Um, okay. So you you went into cookie business. You moved back to Mississippi. You go into cookie business. And are you working from your home? Did you open up a bakery? And kind of bridge the gap from that to somehow or another, you made it on Food Network. How many years was that? I mean, what did that look like? Okay, y'all. Okay, buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, I'm, I was, I'm working from home and have been for the last, this is going into year five. Okay. And there are days, like I said, my children are grown and gone. So I am an empty nester. Um, my husband is a fireman. So he's gone for 24 hours and then home for 48. So I have, a, you know, I do, I'm at that period in my life where I do have time to dedicate to my craft, you right. know, trying to, because the very first cookie that I made, um, my daughter and I've always baked, you know, we've always, you know, baked. And like I said, I've always been artsy, had a mural business, that kind of stuff. But it wasn't until, I started this that I was like trying to hone in on those cookie skills, right? 16, 17 hour days, I would sit and just work and work and work and work and work and work and work. And it was just like, oh my gosh, because I sold my first cookies for $35 a dozen. What? $35 a dozen and was tickled pink and thanking the Lord that people bought them because First of all, they weren't really good and they were not cute. <laughs> Did were. you have to deliver them for $35? No, I think. That okay, was. good. I'm about to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because I, and, but I have worked my way. I charge $125 a dozen today and then book to next January. Amazing. So it's just. Except for my birthday. Don't forget. <laughs> your new BFF's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. Except for your birthday. So it's been like this crazy learning curve, but it was like when, like I said, I've always had art. I've done, I've had a mural business. I've painted, I've clay pots. I had, I had potpeople.com. And what? I'm, not, I'm not talking marijuana. It sounds like marijuana, Ben. Well, I know that's what people think. Oh, they're like potpeople.com. I'm like, listen, listen, Linda. <laughs> I had clay pots that I and I would take five of them and arrange them like a person and then I painted them. Snowman, mm -hmm. toy soldier, name something. I mean, it's just a hot mess. Did you um, sell like at craft shows and like local girl, vendors? Yes. Oh my. So you were so busy, like even just hauling your crap in your car, loading it up, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Carney. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be one. That's how I know. <laughs> See, that's right. So anyway, it was just like when the cookie and I met, it was like marriage made in heaven. You know, I just loved it. And it was like therapeutic for me. So I'm like, I mean, because when you love something, unless you love something, putting that many hours, in, because I I put the same amount of hours into the mortgage business, but it did not, it did not give me the same results. No, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. And so um, there is a cookie world and the cookie world is huge. I mean, it, cookies are like pine trees. They're everywhere. I don't know if you notice now, but like there's a cookie or somebody making cookies on every corner. It's the craziest thing. We have cookie con. Yes two cookie cons a year. I will be teaching at both this year. As a matter of fact, I'll be going to Ohio in May to teach at a cookie, the first cookie con. It's crazy. So in this cookie world, going to the Christmas cookie challenge on the Food Network is kind of like the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. And so okay. I'm like, I, I, I need to do that. But it wasn't until like year two, I think, because I was like confident enough 
that I knew I could, I could hold my own or whatever, as far as ability. Um, and so I was like, we're gonna, we gotta make a video. And I told my husband and I call him Captain Cookie, not approved, not approved. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him, I was like, well, we gotta make a video. And he was like, oh, dear because he knows anytime that I come to him with something, it's going to be a hot mess. So I said, look, I need you to be Santa. Okay. And the only beard I had was I'm a huge saints fan. So I had a saints beard. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to, to see them at the Super Bowl, which is another whole story. We'll talk about that later. But so I'm in the kitchen and I had him like come in here by the fireplace. I want you to like fall I want you to roll out like you just rolled out of the fireplace and I'm gonna film it and then I'm gonna edit it and we're gonna um, we're gonna have smoke coming up and it's gonna be great yeah I'm here to tell y'all this was the cheesiest video you have ever in your life it was horrible it sounds I mean, horrible it actually oh, sounds so cheesy oh it was horrible because he pops out and he's like I'm the head elf and he's coming it's the all season it's like Easter or something because I had Easter cookies that I gave him and I'm like second oh, what are you doing here it's not, it's not he's like I sent in your application to the Christmas cookie challenge for you because I knew you wouldn't do it and if they don't if they don't choose you I'm putting them on the naughty list and I was, I mean, it was so bad. So I wouldn't even send it to my daughter. I just, I FaceTimed her and I let her watch it. And I was like, you tell me what you think. And she was like, Beth. And then when she calls me Beth instead of mom, I know it's not. <laughs> she goes, Beth, one of two things is going to happen. Um, they're either going to love it or you're going to be banned from that show. And nobody's ever calling you to do anything. She was like, that's horrible. And I was like, I know, I know. But I send it in anyway. Yeah. So I sent it in and nothing. So I'm like, oh God, they banned me. I'll never make it to the cookie show. <laughs> Three years later, last November. Yeah, it was no, two years ago, November. At seven o'clock at night, I get a phone call from the casting director and he's like, Beth. And I was like, yes. He was like, this is Cody. And I was like, well, hey, Cody, who are you? And why are you calling me? <laughs> I'm like, all my bills are paid this month. Like, what do you want? <laughs> he was like, no. He was like, I just watched a video of you. And I'm like, uh, so now I'm thinking, oh, dear God, what my 20s? Like, what is, oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> and he's like, um, you and your husband are, um, appear to me, maybe it's the North Pole or somewhere. I don't know. I was like, oh no. It immediately clicked. He was like, I am with the Christmas cookie challenge. I was like, oh. he was like, I don't know where this, how this jewel got lost, but, um, everybody at the Food Network has seen this video. I was like, oh no. He was like, look, we would love to have you on the show. Are you available for an an interview and I'm like yeah yeah like I totally thought y'all had just written me off and so that began a series of about five intensive interviews with producers and executive producers and making things for them structure cookies and like just I mean it was like so intense I was like oh my gosh this is so much literally about six months went by like this process took like six months the vetting process or whatever yeah. and I was at I was in Reno at cookie con and <laughs> walking into the bathroom like literally into the stall and my phone rings and they told me I made it onto the show and I just started screaming in the bathroom I'm like <laughs> and you were at cookie con of all places that's and could not tell a soul could not oh, tell oh man that's soul. painful that's yeah, brutal yeah. could not tell a soul but other people were there getting the call as well and we, so everybody's walking around like I know the people that got called were like who else knows who else knows yeah yeah anyway um and it's crazy because I have I had a we had a booth there um because I do cookie life network which is also like the cookie news or whatever so we were there interviewing people anyway um so they fly me to we shot in Knoxville Tennessee had no idea there was like this huge discovery lot in Knoxville Tennessee had no idea discovery lot no I didn't either 
no we get i get there anyway it was it was an absolute crazy experience um it was the best worst thing i've ever done in my life i don't know how else to describe it it was um i'm a huge christmas fan and walking just walking onto the set in the middle of march onto a full-blown christmas like it was about more than i was just like I mean, that kitchen is so much bigger in person than it looks like on TV, but y'all, I'm, I'm here to tell you, I, they just didn't know what to do with me because I was just like, ah. I was like a kid in a candy store, you know, it's not like you went in and they were like, oh, let's give them this tour of the kitchen so they know where everything is. It's a TV show. They want you to run around and look like an idiot, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, they, they just tell you, they told me there was two rounds and they're like, okay, first round, we need a six inch cookie that looks like a wooden plank. And then it's got to have some sort of string art on it. I'm like, string art. F first of all, I think that's tacky as all get out string art. I'm sorry if you have some, but it's just, I don't even know what string art is. Well, it's got the nail heads on it and they've run string all of, and it looks like something. Was it like a sled or something you were supposed to make? No, girl, I made, well, you could make whatever you wanted to. It just had to be string art. And I thought, oh, and so to me, if it's not inspiring, it ain't, it ain't going to be cute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they want a spack story to go with everything. So I was like, I'm making a candy cane on it with a ribbon. That's what I'm doing. And yeah. so I went and thank you, Jesus, because it was not good. Um, And one day when you see this episode, you'll see. It was a hot, it was bad. It was really Will you bad. send pictures? Do you have like pictures you can send and we can put it to the YouTube on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl. Okay. And the video, and the video of you and your husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's not going to, no, 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 no. That, that video will not be seen. <laughs> <laughs> can I watch it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was horrible. Okay, so listen though. So thank, you know, th they came around. I've got my wooden plank with my thing on it and I kept thinking, oh, what is so I call my mama Shanene. And Wait, we're Shanene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mama is Shanene. Um I, she's the sweetest thing, an angel from heaven, but she's Shanene. She's just Shanene. That's what I've always called my mom. And you know, off Martin, like Shanene. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So they were like, tell us about your candy cane so Reed Drummond and Eddie Jackson are standing there and they want to know my story about the candy cane I was like because it looked horrible so I had to come up with something awful I was like look Shanae had these god-awful candy canes that she used to put on the Christmas tree and they were ugly they were plastic ugly as homemade sin and she, they, she had 8,000 of them and that's this is Shanae's candy cane well Eddie like lost it we had to stop recording like he's on the floor like Shanae what who is Shanae I don't know what the, I was just like, dude, that's what I call my mama now. Anyway. <laughs> so you won this round because of your personality. Is that what you're no, saying? No, <laughs> no. I won this round because of the cookie. So the cookie flavor was a maple, a, a pecan maple bacon cookie that I, it was delicious. And I used real bacon in it. And I used a little liquid smoke was like my secret ingredient. Mm. Anyway, yes. And I have these recipes for sale on my website. Side plug. Okay. <laughs> so the only reason I made it to round two was because of the flavor of that cookie, because the design element, hot mess. Really? Hot mess. Yes. So then we go to round two. Two people get cut. Three people go to round two because there's only five of us in the beginning. And so three of us are now in round two and they, we walk in and they're dressed like they're at the circus. Like Eddie's got on some ticket taker thing. Old girl's dressed up like a ringmaster. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? So they go over there and they tell us, you've got four hours. You have to make a carousel that is at least 12 inches high that ro rotates, that has five character seats on it. And then you have to use two different cookie doughs. Huh? <laughs> uh, do what? <laughs> and we have four hours. Go. And you just start. And then we had to incorporate. So you her. have, listen, I just assumed on all these cooking shows, especially with ridiculous, like things like that, or ridiculous ingredients, like I can only use five ingredients, 
that y'all have had pre-warning of what this is and you can research and have an idea. Are you saying no? No, ma'am. Oh my gosh. I'm running Ugh. over there. I find a lead pipe like to put in that. No, I'm over there. and the, Now they have everything that you need there. You know what I mean? Yeah. To do whatever it is you want to do. But you got to go, you got to, you got to, I'm are you there to sneak in your stuff? Like when you go and grab the stuff, this is a terrible question, but what, uh, like, are you trying, you don't want anybody to see what you've got so they don't <laughs> copy your idea? No, because there's so many things going, like that you look like you're really close to them, but you're really not. I mean, okay. you're close, but like, if I looked over there and saw her, I couldn't see what's on her table. Oh, you know what I mean? You okay. can't. And plus, you're so worried about, you know, you've only got four hours. I mean, I'm getting cookies in the chill blaster. I'm making ice and I'm doing that. I mean, it's just, and, and I tell people because it was, it's not my kitchen. Have you ever tried to go to somebody's house and just make something from, yeah. Yeah. You're like, what in the Sam Hill? Where's yeah. my, where's the, where's the, ah, ah, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. a hot mess. And then, so in the middle we were not permitted anywhere in the middle aisle because they were like 75 cameras, cameramen at every station. So you had your own personal cameraman that went everywhere you went and he was right up on you. Did he it's talk to him? Did you talk to them? Oh, you know, I did. So I don't think people do though, because I walked up initially, the very first thing I did when I walked into my, they told me where my station was, my guy standing there with a big old camera on there. I was like, Hey man, what you doing? <laughs> He's like, uh, I was like, what's your name? And he was like, Mike. I was like, hey, Mike, tell me this is not your first week because I don't need my third chin showing. You better get some good angles, right? And he's like, I got you, babe. And I was like, I don't and think- And by the way, can you go grab that special over there? <laughs> <laughs> put yeah. Mike to work. Were you allowed to put Mike to work? <laughs> but like I'm running back and forth. No, they're not supposed to talk to us. They're not supposed to, they cannot interfere apparently because I, so- Cook, we, I use a Joseph and Joseph rolling pin, which has no handles, like old school rolling pin, you know, it doesn't have handles. So I, sh mine shoots off the front of my station out into the middle where all the camera people are. And I'm like, oh no, this is going to make TV for sure. So I take off running around the corner to get it, trip over the hump. Now I'm doing the helicopter down the middle of the thing. And I'm like, not one of them helped me. And I, I looked around, I was like, are you really? I was like, if we were in the South, I was like, wait a minute, we are in the South. Why is nobody helping me? <laughs> anyway, they, they couldn't, but I mean, girl, I'm telling you, I gave them so much to work with it. Thank you, Lord, that they are in, that they make everybody look good. You know what I mean? Because they really had an opportunity to make me look like a numb nut. But <laughs> 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 yeah. So I cooker for four hours. I can't even fathom how you were able to pull that together. And I can't wait to watch this episode. I've got to go watch this episode. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was, it was a hot mess. mess. It was yeah. a hot mess. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a hot mess. But I pulled it off. Thank you, Jesus. And whew. what yeah. an accomplishment. I absolutely mm -hmm. love, though, that like you started with a scripture of uh, that Leviticus 26, three through six, and you started with a place of you just have big dreams. You dream big and you still have to be still and quiet before the Lord. And you have to surrender your own will to him and really ask him to lead you to the right dream, which I just absolutely love that. Um, but it's like, he's just got a special favor on what you've done. And, and Beth, I want to ask you, do you feel like God has that for all of us? If we would just get still enough, maybe believe bigger about ourselves, maybe dream bigger, dream differently, dream or dream again, and recognize that we actually are capable of so much. And, and God wants that for us. Um, and that it's here for really any woman that's listening to this thinking, oh, well, that's just Beth. Like that's just yeah. Beth because of, you know, she's just, she's just like that. I mean, has it been hard to get to where you are right now? Absolutely. And you're right. Like you said, I like when you said dream again, mm -hmm. like we all dreamed at one time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you lost that dream, you can very easily get it back. But it was like in, if it doesn't scare you to death, you're not growing. 
if I mean, if it doesn't, if it, it should scare you a little, there's a, there's such a thing as healthy fear. Yeah. And um, your glory zone is right outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. It's there and it's there for any of us, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's not going to take hard work to get there. Mm -hmm. Not going to make, it doesn't mean that there's not sacrifice because there's, there's, I mean, hard work, but that's why God's there. I mean, he is there and we'll, he, he never, we, he never leaves us. We leave him. That's right. And if we don't walk away, the things that he has planned for us, our finite minds cannot even comprehend right. to the breath in our lungs, to the hope that he gives, like every little thing is a gift from God. And if we just stop and take that for a minute and treat other people better than we treat ourselves, because sometimes we're really hard on ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, especially as women, it's like, we're supposed to do it all. Yeah. I'm talking all, but we don't have to, mm -hmm. because you can just go rest, you know, go rest in God's arms, because that's, that's a safe place where, girl, and it, it's, like you said, it's a lifestyle, and once you get to the point where you can do that on a daily basis, and I don't, and, and I hate to say, like, it becomes a habit, because it, it takes, what does it take seven times to form a habit and 30 something times to break it, like the science behind a habit. But at first, like spending time with God, because that's nothing else on this planet matters. Mm -hmm. It's about our personal relationship with God. And at the end of the day, if that's not what you're working on, or you're not going to him in prayer in your hard times, in your praises, in your everything, none of this, uh, none of this other stuff matters, mm -hmm. not at all. And it's just like, if we could get to the point where we are working on our relationship with him, that light, it, it becomes a desire and, and it's, there's no longer a habit. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, when you miss a day of not having your quiet time in the morning, or if it's a prayer on your way to work or in your car or wherever you can find it best for you. You know what I mean? So good. So good. I love your heart, Beth. I oh, love the essence yeah. of, of who you are in your heart to stay connected to the Father. I mean, that's where it's at. It really is. And um, I just love the platform that you have and that God's just got his favor on you. I, I thank you for sharing the struggle of just getting to where you are. And I, I just really want, I want, um, dear listener, sweet listener, I want you to hear dream again dream big. God's got something for you and step on out of your comfort zone because truly in your comfort zone, you can never get to that next thing, whatever that thing is that God's laid on your heart and you are needed and necessary. And when you start to see yourself as needed and necessary for the kingdom of God, because we're his ambassadors. I was just sharing this with my coaching group yesterday. The Bible calls us that we are his ambassadors. And if we don't see ourselves as needed and necessary for the kingdom of God, like staying plugged into that mindset here on this earth, then we're not going to show up. And so for you to go, okay, I love cookies. And then here you are now, um, a, a, a national winner and, you know, probably, you know, how those things go, Beth, you'll probably be back on one day and you'll probably be a coach or a judge one day. And, and then, you know, you're going to be like, you know, when you're 80 years old, like Paula Dean, oh yeah, that's a good cookie. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like this is just the platform because you just surrendered it to him and you're willing to take the risk. You've been willing to put in the work. You've skilled up. I think so many women get disheartened because it's a process and the, the skilling up and developing your craft is one part of it. But the other part is, is stepping out in the fear anyway and doing it. Like it is incredibly difficult. But what's more difficult to me, Beth, is... When we don't, and your soul is suffocating because you know you're called for more, and now you're sitting in some regret, and years are starting to go by, maybe decades, and you're like, mm, one day I got to stand before the Lord, and I want to hear 
well done, thy good and faithful servant. I want to hear that. Yes. I don't want to sit on my potential. I don't. That sucks. That yes. sucks. Well, and it's like somebody explained it to me. Like, imagine losing everything and walking to a neighborhood, two, two neighborhoods down and just going up to somebody's house and knocking on the door. And then come to the door and be like, yeah, man. You're like, I've lost everything. Can I live with you? And then be like, well, I, I don't, I don't know you. Could you imagine standing before the Lord one day mm -hmm. and him not going, him saying, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> no, no. So if you want to know the Lord, if you want to know more about what that's talking about, or if, if, like, if you're listening to this going, I don't know that I do know the Lord. I just want to encourage you to reach out to Beth, reach out to me. Like I, I would hop on a phone call. I have a feeling she would too. Oh, Let's absolutely. have a conversation about that because it is a decision. It's, it's not decided when you're born. It is not that you've been going to church and none of that matters. No, what matters not, is not. it is a point in time. Yes. Because when you make a decision. I was raised in the church. <laughs> Same. I yeah. I was in the church, but, and I think I was, and I was baptized because I thought I was going to go to hell if I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's, and it had nothing to do with that. Mm -mm. And it wasn't until later in life that it's about a relationship with Jesus. That's right. So it's, you can be raised in the church and you can be going to church and, and still not have a relationship with God. You don't have, I mean, you could not be going to church and have a relationship with God. You know what I mean? That's right. Jesus didn't really like reli organized religion either. No, he, you know? he got yeah. us, he got us, you know, broken people. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God he takes us. Well, Beth, this is fun. Um, I thought we were talking about cookies. You probably did too. And, and here we are. <laughs> we can talk about the plan of salvation. Um, <laughs> Okay. This has been amazing. I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful that we're connected and I'm just honored to be your friend. And I'm so excited. Just know that I will always be cheering you on and supporting you from the highest level. I know that my listeners are absolutely going to want to connect with you. So can you share with them how they can connect with you online, on your website, and yeah. some of the little bit, a little bit about the cooking classes that you offer. So cool. Yes. Yeah, so I do offer cookie classes. Um, they are online and in person. Mm -hmm. um, they, my website is the vanillin because in the cookie world, I'm known as the vanillin, um, which is a play on words. And the, my logo has the back of the evil queen because, and I'm going to try to explain that a little bit because, um, because we all have gone astray and I feel like the villains get a bad rap. They've, they've just taken the wrong, wrong path and somebody oh. needs to lead them on back. I love that. <laughs> and, I, and I am a Disney fan. So um, my the vanillin on all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, and then the vanillin.com is my website that houses my classes online and in-person classes. And I do private classes as well. Amazing. Amazing. So you guys go connect with her, go check out her online classes, support her, um, help also support us by sharing this podcast, this YouTube video. If you found some value in it, please text your girlfriend, send her the link, especially if you found some inspiration in it. Um, and then also if you're local to us, there's some local classes coming up. So just stay tuned with that. Hop on her mailing list, her email. I'm going to include that in the show notes here. And so, all right. So real quick, rapid fire, rapid fire, Beth, what is your favorite Disney movie since you're a Disney fan? Oh my gosh, probably Little Mermaid because I had to watch it 50 G and thousand times with my daughter when she was little. Okay. All right. If you had a superpower, Beth, what would it be and why? If I had a superpower? Mm -hmm. um, probably... To be able to feed everyone, make sure that no one was hungry. Oh, I love that. And I know that you do a lot of um, philanthropy work. So what, I hate to ask you, what, who's your favorite organization to work for? But what is like the most passionate one on your heart to work for right now? 
So I am a board member for the Central Mississippi Down Syndrome Society. And there is a, children with Down Syndrome are angels that are here on earth, in my opinion, that God has just placed right here. And they, I love them. I just love them. They are the happiest, hugging, loving, most joyful people on the planet. And we could all learn a lot from them. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. All right, my friend. Well, that this was amazing. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you at some local events and some local things. <laughs> yes, and, thanks for having me. Uh, oh my goodness, of course, of course. And keep us posted. And as things come along your way, I would love to have you back on the show so we can all support you. And I just feel like, honestly, I just want to speak this over you, Beth. I just feel like um, what you've done is such a tremendous accomplishment. And I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy for you. But I really feel like the Lord is saying in this moment, girlfriend, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> That's Ooh. me beginning. And so just, I want you to even dream bigger than you're dreaming now and step into that. My favorite scripture is um, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine according to his riches in Christ Jesus. So I'm just going to speak okay. that over you. And next one that comes along your way, you're going to come back on. You're like, okay, Amy, this is what we did last time. And then we're going to do it again and again, because I am team Beth over here. Team Vanillion. <laughs> <laughs> all right girl thanks again all Thank right you guys you. we'll see you on the next one bye